St Mary's neonatal unit in Portsmouth, and two-day-old Joseph and Samuel are at last stable in its intensive care ward. Still two and a half months premature, Mary Jane and Andrew long to hold their babies. Grumpy, isn't he? It probably takes all its effort just to go... Uh, uh. First time I've seen him with her eyes open. It's a, he did it this morning. <laughs> Probably looking for his brother. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a bit scary. Oh, hello. In a couple of days, we'll be used to it, no doubt. But at the moment, when, when they bleep and things like that, you think, oh, God. Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, is it? It's not like it's supposed to be. Oh, no. I don't like it when they move. Why? Because you can pull all them wires off. You will pull them off. Got shown around it before, so we mm. knew what was going to happen. But that's. Well, nothing can pr mm. prepare for this, can it? Mm. Not really. But when you're looking at somebody else's baby, you know, you don't love that baby, do you? So it is completely different because, Oops. you know, that's our flesh and blood lying there and you, there is nothing you can do to help them, but they know what they're doing, so. In outpatients, Edward's come in for a checkup. After finishing another course of chemotherapy, he's been home for just two days. Thankfully, his broken leg seems to be on the mend. I want to go now. Won't be long. Won't be long. Lisa's just coming back, look. You're getting hot. But last x-ray we had, it's healing. No, it's healing. Yes. Do they? And your arm aches as well. I know you do. Let's just wait for Lisa. Do you want to come out of the bush chair? To come and sit on my lap for a minute. Ow! What hurt? You're getting hot. You feel a bit toasty. Let's get his temperature taken. He's a bit toasty. Claire knows the warning signs. Edward can become ill so quickly and she needs to get help. They have the chemotherapy and it affects their bone marrow um, and they can get very poorly very, very quickly. A child can be fine and then within an hour um, they've got an overriding infection which just completely takes over and they can get very, very sick. Um, and because he potentially hasn't got any white cells of his own on board to fight infection, we need to act very quickly with antibiotics to fight that infection for him because basically he's got nothing to do it himself. Cancer nurse specialist Lisa Munro will monitor Edward closely. To be on the safe side, she's also phoned Alton 3 Ward for a bed for Edward, just in case. Over at Queen Alexandra's G1 Children's Ward, there's one little boy who may not be mobile, but he knows what's what. I've got a bone disease. The weights on my legs are uncomfortable and I've got two bandages on and they're very heavy. Charlie's got a disease called Perthes disease, which is a bone disease of the hip that affects mainly little boys. Well, the best thing is the food. And you get to do whatever you want. Orthopaedic consultant Mr Rob Richards is hoping the week of traction has worked. If not, Charlie will need a full plaster cast. He's kind of dreading that. Right, so how's Charlie? OK. Is your hip feeling better today? A little bit. It's getting better. Okay. Can you bend it up for me? It's bending up better, isn't it? It's going out to the side. I think now the spasm has gone. I think we need to rest it. I think probably the safest way of doing that is to put him into a plaster. Okay. I think that gives it a chance to sort of to rest and to, and to heal up. Yeah. I would have thought we should aim to do that on um, Monday. Right, does he go home in between? I would suggest he stays here? on traction over the weekend. Right. We'll do this on Monday. And how long does he have to stay in that? Six place? weeks in plaster. Might be able to put it on within a week. Right. Which saves Hopefully, him having an yeah. anaesthetic. Okay. Right. You'll be all right. You'll be all right, darling. Oh, no, don't cry. <laughs> Back in outpatients, Chelsea's arrived. Miss Jones. Hiya, <laughs> hey, Chelsea. Any details changed since last time? Nope, all the same. 
It's her regular checkup at the clinic, especially for children with cystic fibrosis. Okay. She has come to clinic. Um, she hasn't been feeling not on top of the world. She's been quite tired. And this ongoing cough that we've, we've got at the minute, which is sort of dragging her down a bit, bit, which is a worry. So we need to just make sure that everything's OK and she doesn't need anything extra to go on top of the medication that she already has. Dr Mark Ashton heads up the neonatal team. As a consultant, he's been keeping a close eye on our 30-week twins. How much morphine is he on? Quite pleased with them, really. Um, as we'd expect, the, the bigger of the twins is doing slightly better, and from a long point of view, he's, he's improved and you know, quite happy with him. Very, very soft ejections to start with. I just wonder whether he'd be quite interested in breathing for himself a bit more. He's on CMV at the moment. If we put him onto SIMV, you know, I think it'd be quite useful to let him breathe at the rate that he wants to breathe at. His little brother um, is more difficult, but again, what we'd expect uh, at the moment, we're just fine-tuning the management of, of what he needs. Um, we've got various things that we're considering whether or not we need to do at the moment, and we need to see what happens over the next 24 hours. The major organ system that we worry about is going to be whether the lungs are able to support the baby, and that clearly is the limiting factor. Did you notice how yeah, really and with very premature babies, that's usually the, the, the problem, at least they're not surviving. Um, and so we monitor that very carefully. Um, and that's the whole thing of intensive care, really. It's just taking over the, as many systems as we can. He's not someone I want to feed either at the moment. Um, if we make a plan for five days, no by mouth, and then reassess after that. Samuel is, yeah, could do better, I suppose, but he'll get there. Consultant Sheila Peters is ready for Chelsea. We have 35 patients with cystic fibrosis in Portsmouth, varying ages from three months up to 16, 17 years. We have a clinic that runs once a fortnight, which is called the CF Clinic. So we all know all the children and what's happening for them. How's it going? When I'm doing a physio, she's not giving it what I know she can. She's looking a bit pale. She is, yeah. And this, I mean, this cough is coughing to choking, and there is nothing I can do. Is anything coming up? She is, she is bringing up, yeah. Sheila's already asked me, is it green, is it green? And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. It's not going to be purple the next day. <laughs> There's nothing else we can do until we've got this, till we've had the tonsils and adenoids out. I know that, you know, but I'm worried because, because the weight loss, yeah. Because that cough's been going along for months now, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah. But when did it start yeah. to get worse? Um, last few days, especially. Have a look at your tonsils. See how large they are today. Yeah. <laughs> large and a bit pink. OK, have you done your cough swab yet? No. OK, sounds like you need a session with Avril for lung function test and cough test. Okay. <clears throat> um. I think probably the where we'd be going from here would be to um, wait for the cough swab to come back, see what kind of level of bugs we've got, and probably start some antibiotics. Being upset and angry with me isn't We've waited to... an hour to see a GP this morning, two hours for a poxy ambulance. We've been dragged up to this hospital, and you're telling me we've got to wait another three bloody hours. I'm afraid I'm going to call security now and have you removed. Okay, well, I don't have any. Carry choice. on, because I want okay. my child to call to. security, please. Hey, staff nurse Norton two, first speak for security, please. Where the safety of children is paramount, violence and aggression has become an intolerable visitor. Don't say back off, because if you say back off, they will hear fuck off. Yeah. Okay? So you will give them a mixed message. They are irrational. They won't hear back off. They will hear fuck off and they will get 
more aggressive. So if there's As a result, the hospital trust now runs courses for staff to learn how to defuse potentially violent situations. Say, right, that's enough. I'm sorry, but your behaviour is inappropriate. Please read that sign. It says that I don't have to tolerate being sworn at. You swearing at me isn't going to get you or your loved one seen any quicker. I'm really, really sorry, but I've got to go off and see this other child who's extremely unwell and may die if I don't get Well, it's that. not good enough. So, please, no, is that OK? No, I'm just going to no, go off now. Just don't run off a minute. I'm, look, I'm pissed look, off for this now. I'm sorry, sir. No, I'm pissed off for this now, right? I felt very intimidated, to be honest. Even in a role-playing situation, I mean, Phil's a nice guy and everything, but, I mean, goodness. You know, I could feel my pulse racing and my mouth drying up, and, and if in a real scenario, I, mean, I think that would be really frightening. Has anybody seen Dolores? Joe Walker became the victim of a terrifying attack two years ago. Mark Ashton came to her aid, and both were very seriously injured after a patient's family chose violence to make their voice heard. It doesn't happen to paediatricians. You know, it really doesn't happen to paediatricians, and it just came completely out of left field. I was just totally shocked by it, and I think that's probably what upset me most, that was the most disabling thing, was that I was just not prepared for what happened at all. Um, it took a long time to get over it, still getting over it. Stop. It's very difficult to actually come back to work after something like that has happened to you. It's not just the physical injuries which stop me from doing the normal things that I do for stress release, but um, it's also the recollection of what actually happened and coming back into that environment. It's, it's a, a dreadful thing to happen. I've always thought that I was a relatively strong individual and I hadn't actually had any time off at all following the event or for the years afterwards until the following court case last summer where I found that I really was not up to, to working. I used to bring back lurid memories and nightmares and everything. Things go wrong, believe me, of course they do. And I mean, there may be grounds for people to be able to say, yep, I think we could have done that better. That is not a problem. But what we cannot tolerate, and this is what happens more and more, are people in the middle of a ward where you have got sick children around who are shouting and, and, and threatening at the tops of their voices or threatening physical violence to the staff in front of sick children, other families, and which is not justified. Back in outpatients, Edward is hot, and usually a temperature means only one thing, right. an infection. He's a bit his okay. wrist is achy, he said, and his ankles. Let me check his temperature as well. Mm. Oh, well, all of a sudden, if I leave you with those, I've got yeah. a range of syringes. Thank you. Is that everything you need yeah. for a minute? And I'll, um, yeah. Go and get the mum to sweet up. Come here. Oh, you think you need, I've left my sick bowls in the way. Go and get them. Claire gives Edward all his medication. It's 24 hours a day. The peaks and troughs of his illness make her something of an expert on what's going on in his little body. Contents in the stomach, isn't it? They've asked me before here, am I in medicine? And I said, I've just had a crash course, haven't we? Right, I found the ward and they're ready. I'm putting the push chair, sweetheart, is that OK? Don't do it. Good, your leg, sorry. Back at Queen Alexandra Hospital, it's Charlie's last day of freedom. Get him on the couch and I'll explain everything all about it, okay? Right, Come on in, Tiger. Well, we for six weeks, that is. Onto my little couch, yeah? Huh? Yeah. This is not going to be so bad. No, it's possible. I'm going to be scared. Yes, yeah. Scared. We're doing what play? I hope you don't have to make me go to sleep because I think I heard the doctor say you might make me go to sleep. Have you seen the film The Mummy? <laughs> yes. Have you? Yes, we have some. Do you find it scary? No. <laughs> I keep having these awful dreams about trying to fit a child with his legs plastered apart through doorways and through stairs. and So I'm not over the moon. But at the end of the day, if that's the best thing for him, then that's the way it's got to be. Well, so what we're doing now is we're just 
putting a layer of fiberglass over the top of the plaster. That's uh, polyurethane resin, and it'll make it uh, much, much harder. And the only thing we've got to do now is add a bar across here. I'll go and do that in a second, and that will hold the thing from breaking off. You're on there now. I'm expecting it to be quite so yeah. huge. That'll do fine. Yeah. You've got your very own stick there. Good man. Good yeah, we'll need, we need to take the trolley, won't we? Or... Uh, we'll need his bed. Back in neonatal, the pressure seems to be taking its toll on Mary Jane. As Samuel remains in intensive care, his brother Joseph has been promoted to the special care ward and is making progress. Well, Joseph's doing very well and he's been promoted from room to room to room and he's now in a special care room. Um, and doing very well, just isn't causing any concern at all. For Samuel, the picture is different. Mark and the team discuss his progress. With everything they try, Samuel just can't seem to find the strength to respond. Sunday, today, uh, um, Samuel's over two weeks old now. And this is what often happens with babies that are as, as small and as premature as, as Samuel has been. And really, over the last three or four days, his lungs have become much worse with quite severe damage within them, um, very gradually slipping, slipping backwards. Edward's got sort of a, quite a rare um, type of cancer, and the chemo that he needs is very, very intensive and quite aggressive, really. Obviously, the majority of parents associate cancer with death and dying. Um, but they do then sort of get away from that fear um, of the C word. Right. Straight down the end of the leg. OK. Thank you. <laughs> oh, look at that. You've got a lovely view from here, Edward. Oh, look, the cemetery. We usually get a view of the cemetery from the other, the other cubicles. I've been in this room before. Another pillow, isn't it? There you go. Yeah. Thank you. He's a good boy. I'm wrapping a bit. This is it. <laughs> oh, do you pop it? All right. <laughs> After nearly three decades of being so much a part of these wards, today Dr. Richard Hallett completes his final ward round. It's the last time his patients will share in his gentle bedside manner. Good. Downstairs, his secretary Sarah Jenkins is planning his retirement party. Is it going to be a complete surprise to him? He, as well? Oh, he knows it's going to happen because I obviously had to ask him about a date. Mm. Good. He's got a mild wheeze, but um, nothing else. We've seen his uh, chest X-ray, which couldn't look more normal. Yeah, it was quite funny because Dr. Hallett came in the office yesterday and he went, "Oh, good heavens! Hasn't this all been sorted yet?" <laughs> I mean, I don't know what plan had been made, but I would have thought he was, you know, in the normal course of things, so, uh, all right to go home and just continue at home. That's what he wanted to hear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's got no idea what we're sort of planning to do. That's good. So. Yes. It, it, it's, it'll be quite nice, really, I think, for him. Yeah. I don't know how he'll deal with it all, really, because he's quite a private person, very isn't shy. he? He's always been very shy. Yes, totally good. OK, bye-bye, okay, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We have to take into account people that, you know, just think they're so important that we'll naturally assume they're going to attend. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, like, is, that that <laughs> is that diplomatic <laughs> enough? <laughs> so this is your last day, is it? Last on board round, anyway, yeah. yeah. Last day. <laughs> what are you going to do now, then? I'm going to do that. Well, I've still got a busy week to finish off, but that's it. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you all for your continued support, and hopefully it will be a very nice evening. All right? OK, thanks very much. OK, that's it, then, is it? Yeah, OK. Yes. Have a cup of tea with oh, me thank there. you. All right. <laughs> Hello there. Nostalgic, Dr. I know. Yes. 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 yes I know. I know. I know. You'll have to come back and do a reprieve or something. Um,
wasn't even difficult either. I'll put the kettle on. Oh, what a surprise. Oh, really lovely, crumbs, yes. I didn't realise it was your very last ever wardrobe. I know, I know. Very nostalgic, really. It is, isn't it? It's sad, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice wardrobe, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty nice wardrobe. Yeah. My big worry at the moment is making sure that I've got everything tidied up before I actually leave, so I'm actually very busy. Somebody said to me, are you winding down before leaving? And I said, oh, crumbs, I wish I could. I, don't, I can't like, wind down. We've got far too many things to get done before I actually go. Otherwise, I'm not sure about a film with cake in my hand. I'm in trouble. They've suggested we become an inpatient. People say, I'll get home, get back to normality. And then when you realise there's nothing normal about it at all, but you've just got to make the disease just an aspect of our lives rather than overtaking the whole thing. Over at G1, Charlie seems to have mastered the finer points of getting around. Dirty. I like getting dragged around, so. Their baby is slipping away, but Mary Jane and Andrew stay close by Samuel's side, holding on to the hope that he will pull through. We had a long discussion with his mum and dad about the damage that's happened to his lungs. And we've taken the decision to start him on some steroids to try and improve his, his overall condition. And we accept that doing that is going to be quite fraught with potential side effects. But on balance, we feel that the, the possible benefits of using this treatment outweigh the, the possible risks at the moment. And Although I've still got quite a bit of hope that uh, Samuel's going to get out of here and it's going to be all right. That's what I really hope. Um, some babies we know don't survive. He's sufficiently ill that there is now the chance that he's not going to pull through. And I think that we owe him every chance that we've got. 